Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be talking about the anatomy and the physiology of the semicircular canals. But before we go into that, let's do a brief review of some of the relevant anatomy here. This entire structure shown over here on the right side of the screen is called the cochleovestibular apparatus, and it has two main functions. One is hearing, also called audition, and that is provided by the cochlea, which is this structure over here on the right that looks like a snail shell. So going all the way around here, up to about this point right there where I'm drawing my mouse. Everything to the right of that is the cochlea. Everything to the left of this line would be the vestibular apparatus. And the vestibular apparatus has two main components. Those are the vestibule and the semicircular canals. Now the vestibule itself has three parts. One is right here, and it really is just a connection between these two components right here, which we'll get to in a minute, and the cochlea, so just a connection piece. And then it has the utricle and the saccule. The saccule shown right here is the part closest to the cochlea. And the saccule is involved in the sensation of linear vertical acceleration, like you're on an elevator going up or down, and then static vertical head tilt. So if you just simply hold your neck flexed forward or holding your neck extended backwards, it helps in the sensation of that, knowing where your head is in space. And then right here is the utricle, which is closest to the semicircular canals. Then we have the utricle, which is closest to the semicircular canals. The utricle is involved in the sensation of linear horizontal acceleration. For example, when you go on one of those walking sidewalks at the airport that helps you go faster, when you're accelerating on that, the utricle would sense that. And then also static horizontal head tilt. So if you're just holding your head side bent to one direction, it would help you know where your head is in space. And then we have the semicircular canals, and there are three of them, and they are named anterior, also called superior, posterior, which has no other name, and lateral, which is also called horizontal. And we'll go into the individual functions of these three later on in the video, but for now, understand that they sense rotational acceleration as opposed to the vestibule, which senses linear acceleration or just static positioning, either in uh, side bending or flexed or extension. You'll also notice that each one of these canals connects back with the utricle via this enlargement right here called the ampulla. And each one of the three canals has an ampulla. Here's a zoomed in look at one of the semicircular canals. Each one of these canals has several components. One is obviously the canal, which is filled with a viscous fluid called endolymph. You can see that spelled right there. At the base, there's an enlargement called the ampulla. We saw that on the previous slide. And then we'll zoom in on the ampulla. We'll look right here. Number three, they each have a layer of cells in the ampulla called cristae. So cristae really just refers to the form or shape that the cells take, where they kind of have these folds. If you ever looked at the mitochondria, they have cristae, right? Those are the folds. And within those folds, there are cells called hair cells. The hair cells here are colored in this pink color. There's four of them. And they're embedded in the cristae within those folds. Now, projecting upward from these hair cells, there are cilia, right? And we'll come to those on the next slide. We'll actually see that there's one large kinocilium. It's always the largest cilia. And then there's many stereocilia, okay? These are the smaller ones that are around the one kinocilium. And then number six, we have this gelatinous blob here called the cupula, and it envelops the cilia of the hair cells. So not the hair cells themselves, but these cilia project into the cupula. And so what I want you to notice is we have this connection. The cupula, of course, is connected to all these cilia. The cilia, in turn, are connected to these hair cells. And then these hair cells on their other sides are actually connected to these afferent fibers of the vestibular nerve. And then, of course, those afferents converge into the vestibular nerve. And you can't see it here, but that, of course, combines with the cochlear nerve to form the vestibulocochlear nerve, or cranial nerve 8, which then goes back to the central nervous system. So this bottom bullet point right here, keep all this in mind, but knowing the anatomy will actually help you understand all of this.
As we mentioned before, each of these pink hair cells embedded within the folds of the crista ampullaris has one large kynocilium, always the longest cilium. And then around it, there are 40 to 70 smaller stereocilia. Again, the way you can remember this is stereocilia and smaller both begin with an S. Now, remember that these cilia are all embedded within the cupula. And then around the cupula, we have this fluid called endolymph, which of course circulates from the ampulla on one side all around the canal to the other side. So logically speaking, if the endolymph moves, it's going to move the cupula. It's going to bend it one direction or the other. And when the cupula bends, it's either going to bring the stereocilia closer to the kynocilium, or it's going to move the stereocilia further from the kynocilium. So as a person's head accelerates through rotation, emphasis on accelerates, not constant velocity, the endolymph within one or more of the semicircular canals begins to move. So for example, if the head of a person accelerates through rotation in this direction, let's call that counterclockwise, then the endolymph will always move in the opposite direction, so clockwise. So the endolymph always accelerates in the opposite direction as the head is accelerating when it's rotating. And as we said, when the endolymph moves, it's going to deflect the cupula in the same direction. So here's an important point here. With acceleration through head rotation, the stereocilia move toward the kynocilium and increase the rate of depolarization. So these afferents that are going towards the vestibular nerve, they always have a tonic rate of firing. So they're always firing to some extent at a baseline rate. But as soon as those stereocilia move toward the kynocilium, get closer to it, which occurs during positive acceleration, you get an increased rate of depolarization. Or with deceleration of head rotation, the stereocilia move away from the kynocilium, and that decreases the rate of depolarization. That's what you see over here for three. So you could think of it as negative acceleration, or just call it deceleration. So remember, there are three semicircular canals, the posterior canal, the superior canal, also called the anterior canal, and then the horizontal canal, also called the lateral canal. Now, one important note here. These canals are not at perfect angles. So almost never will you have one canal producing depolarization while the other two are inactive or hyperpolarized. You're always going to have some contribution from at least two of them, sometimes all three. Now for some motions, like we're going to see over here, it might be 90% one canal and maybe 5% the other two, but you're almost never going to have complete isolation of one. We're just simplifying this over here. I'm going to be talking about both the acceleration and deceleration components for both of the motions associated with each of the three canals. However, when you talk about this in a clinical setting or in pretty much any coursework that I could possibly think of, you are pretty much exclusively talking about the acceleration. So if you take anything away from this video, understand which canals are depolarizing and which are hyperpolarizing during the acceleration, because that's what you're probably going to be asked about or need to know. We're going to touch on the deceleration, though, after each one. So let's first talk about the horizontal or lateral canal. The main way you activate these canals is by shaking the head no, so basically cervical rotation either left or right. So when you undergo left cervical rotation, and you should do this, rotate your head to the left, the canal that activates is always ipsilateral. Okay. So when you do left cervical rotation, the left horizontal canal depolarizes, that's what the green check means, but the right canal hyperpolarizes, that's what the red X means. Conversely, if you undergo right cervical rotation, then the right horizontal canal is going to depolarize, and the left horizontal canal is going to hyperpolarize. In other words, whichever direction you rotate your head, the ipsilateral horizontal canal depolarizes and the contralateral horizontal canal hyperpolarizes. And the way we're thinking about that is with acceleration. But of course, if you're rotating your head to the left, and let's say somebody took a video of it in slow motion, at first, 
you're accelerating through left cervical rotation. But your head doesn't continue rotating left indefinitely, otherwise you'd break your neck, right? So of course you have to slow down as you get towards end range. That's the deceleration. And while you're decelerating, everything flips. This is true of every case we're gonna look at. Okay. So with left cervical rotation, as you're initially rotating left, yes, the left horizontal canal depolarizes and the right horizontal canal is hyperpolarized. But as you start decelerating, everything's flipped because now this is negative acceleration. So as you're decelerating through left rotation, now the left horizontal canal is going to hyperpolarize and the right horizontal canal is going to depolarize. And to understand that, let's actually take a look at this video. So right there, you see the right horizontal canal. In just a minute, it'll highlight the left horizontal canal. And initially, this guy's gonna rotate to the left. Now there's gonna be an acceleration phase at first, followed by a deceleration phase. So as he rotates to the left, the positive sign indicates depolarization of the left horizontal canal. But of course, as he decelerates, it's gonna flip, right? And then the left horizontal canal hyperpolarizes. You can make the same argument with right rotation. In right rotation, as we saw, the left horizontal canal is hyperpolarized, but as soon as he starts decelerating through right rotation, then the left horizontal canal is going to depolarize. Now the posterior canal is activated with head tilt, which is the same thing as side bending or also called lateral flexion. Okay? And when you cervical side bend to the left, you should do it, there's of course a phase where you're accelerating through that motion and then towards the end you decelerate. Okay? When you're accelerating into left cervical side bending, so the first part of the movement, the canal that is going to depolarize is ipsilateral. So with left cervical side bending, the left posterior canal produces depolarization. The right posterior canal produces hyperpolarization. When you right cervical side bend, the right posterior canal produces depolarization, and the left posterior canal produces hyperpolarization. So again, which side depolarizes is always ipsilateral, and which side hyperpolarizes is always contralateral. Now again, we can make the same case for deceleration. Everything's going to be the opposite. So back to that left cervical side bending. At first, while we're accelerating through left cervical side bending, we get depolarization through that left posterior canal, and the right posterior canal is going to produce hyperpolarization. But as soon as we get to the point where we start decelerating towards end range, everything flips. Now the left posterior canal is going to be hyperpolarized and the right posterior canal is going to produce depolarization. Okay? And then we have the superior, also called anterior semicircular canal, which is going to activate when we nod forward as if to say yes. So bowing our head forward, that would be cervical flexion. So when we accelerate through cervical flexion, we actually get depolarization through both of the anterior canals, left and right. That's because the superior canal is almost completely positioned within the sagittal plane. So when you bend your neck forward, you can't isolate one or the other. They're actually both going to activate to relatively the same amount. They both are going to produce depolarization. Okay? Now, when you undergo cervical extension, which is the opposite direction, okay, looking up at the ceiling, it's the opposite of flexion, right? So when you accelerate into cervical extension, the left and right anterior canals are both going to produce hyperpolarization. Okay? But then, if we talk about the deceleration phases of both of those movements, those are again the opposite of the accelerations. So with cervical flexion, for example, both of the anterior canals are going to produce depolarization while we're accelerating, but as soon as we get toward the end of that range and we quickly decelerate, both of those canals are going to hyperpolarize. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.